out. Okay, and this is the meeting of April 20th and this is the Board of Health and blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> fill in the blank. Um, can we approve the minutes of last meeting? Any problems with them? Um, None. Okay. I will assume that we're okay. So on the on the agenda notes that I sent you, one of the things is the septic system inspection for 11 King Road, which is the house that John Bell used to own. And um, Donna McNichol and uh, child and in-law, I forget if it's son and daughter and in-law or vice versa, are buying that place. And um, it was, it was found in the Title V inspection to have to be that um, further evaluation was needed by the local approving authority, which is us. Um, usually when this happens, it's because, and this is, it was the case here, it's because there's a well between 50 and 100 feet away. Um, and usually what they do is they get the water test done. When a water test passes, then they redo the, the front page of the Title V inspection and call it passed. And so we don't really have to do anything because that's all it's about. Um, this person didn't do that. So Donna had a septic system inspection report that said further evaluation was needed by the Board of Health and she needed fast action to make a, a closing date. So I took it upon myself after making sure we had all the documentation and the water test results, which were all over Kingdom Come uh, and that everything was good. And I, um, I went ahead and wrote a letter saying that the system passed. So there it is. You can, you can depose me as chair if you disagree with this, but um, uh, since it's basically an open and shut thing, um, I, I figured it was it was okay to do. I hope you all don't mind. No, that's fine. We just explain it again. I didn't quite get why we had to go through it this way this time, Kat. Okay, um, there's a, it's a statutory, not a failure exactly, but it's a red flag if there right. is a well more than 50 feet but less oh, than this oh, oh, 100 okay. feet away right mm -hmm. and so yep. the the normal procedure which is get the well test done and then say okay it passed because the water tests are good um right that person didn't do that it's somebody that we don't uh, okay we okay. don't work with that often yep that's good thank you okay <clears throat> um other things going on on the lake. I'm going to skip and jump here a little bit. Um, 66 Lake Drive. Remember that, Bob Douglas? Yes. And, and that you know, fancy, fancy uh, um, uh, uh, septic system. And he came in. He came in with his three samples of water. Remember that? Um, yes. <laughs> right. And was amazed that we could all tell which one was which. I mean, really. Um, um, I remember that. He maybe you weren't there, but I thought you were. He okay. he came in. He had he had stuff going on with the well and the septic system, and it was really tight and it was really complicated. So he brought in three little samples of water. One was from the well there, and one was from the well at Town Hall, and one was from the water bottle at Town Hall. And for some reason, he felt that I don't know his his well water was indistinguishable from town hall well water or something, which it was not. We all immediately said, oh, this is the one from your well, which is kind of, you know, mucky. Anyway, um, anyway, they've got a problem there at 66 Lake Drive that's affecting the whole side of the lake. This is this, I'm just telling you this for informational reasons. Um, basically where number 66 is, is sort of at the bottom of a, of a slope of two things, two parts of the road coming down. And so there's a huge amount of road runoff, which has been exacerbated by other, other um, homeowners there 
berming their property so that the water doesn't come on their land. And so it's all going on uh, Bob Douglas's property. And there's a, there's a, there's some kind of little drainage thing there that the, somebody claimed we made them put in, which is not true. And then there's a, a sort of a swale that goes down to the lake, but that is just like completely flooded. I saw it. I went with Miriam Defont last year, I guess, and um, and looked at that, and it's just you know completely ripped out by flooding water. And there's there's whenever it rains, there's a big plume of silt and stuff that goes in the lake. So so Bob Douglas is trying to get some kind of action from CONCOM to make this stop. And um, everybody would like to make it stop, but nobody can figure out how. And um, uh, it's, it's bigger than Bob Douglas, right? It's a whole, a whole neighborhood thing that has to be addressed. And so uh, LWAC is involved in trying to get um, some planning grants and you know engineering study grants and stuff to solve the problem over the long term, but they are looking to try to do something in the short term to um, to you know just um, mitigate mitigate this. Um, and that's all. Just that that's going on, and uh, there's going to be a a site visit there, I think on Sunday afternoon that I'm gonna to try to get to, uh, along with other people from, well, CONCOM, LWAC, Lake Wyola Association, and so on, just to, just to look at it and get an idea. So that's just for your information. Um, uh, quick things, the disposal works construction permits. We have two of them for this property. I think it's the property that was formerly owned by Elaine Weaver at the corner of West Pelham and Baker Road. And it's getting subdivided. Um, Brad Spry is doing some of it and a piece of it has been bought. Uh, actually, I think we might have, well, I don't remember if we did or not, Here's the situation. Charlie recommends that we approve these once we get all the fees and all the other the stuff. And um, I have to check and make sure we have the fees and the signed, signed um, applications and stuff. And what I would like is your authorization to issue them as soon as they are um, ready to be issued. I just have a clarifying question again. So this is like a little subdivision cat is what you're saying? That's a, a, or a piece it, of property that's being divided into pieces? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it's not a formal subdivision, but it's a big right. piece. And, yeah. um, and some pieces are being knocked off and developed. Two pieces mm -hmm. that I know of. Um, and... Um, and why do we have to sign off on this? I don't. I don't recall doing this before ever, but maybe we have. Septic system. We're we're signing off on the septic systems. Oh, they're predetermined. These septic systems or plans. Pla plans have been plans submitted. for them. Okay. Right. Right. We're we're giving. Okay. The I didn't. We're I didn't get that part. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're 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 to issue the the permits for these. Okay. And, and Fine. Charlie has reviewed the plans and recommends the approval. Is that right? That is right. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I, di I didn't understand that there were already plans submitted, so that's fine. Noreen needs well, more caffeine. Apparently. No, I, I just <laughs> ate a bunch of chocolate. <laughs> yeah, that, that should do it. I think I need more clarity. I need to be clearer, that is. I'm, ki I'm kidding. <laughs> um, well, you never know. So let's, <laughs> let's, um, let's go back to 56 Wendell Road the in, interminable saga of 56 Wendell Road. Oh, yes, um, right. Uh, things, oh, I meant to send you something. I'll do it right now. Um, things are, are um, happening, but there are just, everything is just unbelievably complicated. It turns out that the Steves are very old fashioned people who like rarely ever use email and um, they, you know, they do things more 
in person and whatnot. And consequently, I've had a really difficult time just communicating with them. Mm. Um, who else is here? Garen and Wim. And I'm sending to you, I'll send that too, um, his, Greg's message um, where he's given us a bunch of, a bunch of the documentation that we asked for. Getting it was like getting blood out of a stone, but uh, I have, um, and I just mail, emailed it to you guys, if you want to look at it on your own computers. I got the quote for um, the environmental uh, survey. I got the, what's this? The demolition quote. I guess that's pretty much all, and some some uh, explanations um, in the in the text of the letter. And it seems to me, I mean, Kathy is on vacation this week, and she and Greg are working on this, and he feels that he's finally making some, getting some traction on it. And I would suggest that I mean, since we missed the beginning of this month. And we were talking about the beginnings of the month. Obviously, I don't want to have to hound them <laughs> every two weeks for this. I'm going to suggest that we agree tonight, assuming you're satisfied with this documentation that I've just sent you, to not take any action on the condemnation until our first meeting in June when we would review it again. And I will, I will twist arms to make sure we get another report at that time telling us where things are. Is there any objection to this course of action? Well, the one that's asleep has another question. So this would be <laughs> like accepting this is the um, information for the month of May. Is that where we are, Kat, in this whole sequence? Well. I'm thinking that, yeah, essentially, essentially. I mean, yeah. it's it rather than rather than two weeks from now asking him to send us yeah. another thing, to just put it off until the beginning of June, right? Well, I mean, didn't we go? I, I thought we went on a uh, month by month basis anyway in the letter we wrote to them, but you know maybe well, my memory is only me. We did, but I talked to Greg um, earlier today, I guess, and he hadn't even got the letter because apparently it goes to the post office and he doesn't go there very often. So oh, it's just, geez. you know, it's wow. just, okay. yeah. Okay. Communication has just been a nightmare. Um, so I'm, you know, and I have to take some of the responsibility for that because I haven't been like constantly calling him and reminding him. And right. I right. didn't realize that he just never looks at his email. So we'll okay. be like, in the middle of what I think is a conversation and he just drops out and I don't hear from him again, like ever. Yeah. So it's been, it's been very frustrating, but I think I, I think I get it now. I, I wonder what success these various players like the demo company have, what success they have in communicating with him too. Or, you know, how in the world is he kept conducting business? Um, maybe- Not by email. Yeah, so. And, and evidently not by snail mail so much. So maybe Pony Express, but, 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 um, <laughs> but I, I agree with your plan, it, especially in that our last decision about um, this month to month thing, uh, that last is, we reached that last decision at our last meeting, which was just two weeks ago. We right. wanted the information by tonight so that we could mm -hmm discuss it but in fact he's still within the first month of that notification of uh of the month-to-month -month plan so anyway my, long story short i'm good with um not asking him for more information until our first meeting of june if that's if i understand you correctly that is what i'm suggesting okay so i i don't object to what's been said the, the only thing that i would acknowledge is that in the information that you've shared with us the dates and in some cases the information shared have expiration dates associated uh -huh. with it and 
you know, so in, in one of the cases, it's dated September 14th of 2021 with an expiration date of November 13, 2021. Right, and that is um, a quote for the asbestos survey, which um, uh, to my, the best of my knowledge has actually been done. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Greg told me earlier in a conversation some time ago that the that the survey had been done, um, and they hadn't, and they had told him that um, that they didn't didn't find any, but they hadn't actually sent him the report. Okay. Um, so that's why I think that's why we don't have a a report here. Um, you know, I asked him about the lawyer, for example, he said that, you know, he's been working with a lawyer trying to get the, the, um, insurance company to, to pay a more reasonable amount. Um, but he doesn't have any, he doesn't have any, um, emails or letters from the lawyer. He said he goes in and talks to him in person. I mean, this is very 19th century. It's interesting, but um, it makes it hard to get documentation. So, so that's what we have anyway. Uh, yeah, I just have one question. I'm fine with the plan and with going forward with another month, but maybe we can get at least like the lawyer's name or something in case we ever have to yeah. follow up on this stuff. Right, yeah. I. Uh, I asked him if possibly the lawyer could just send us an email because presumably the lawyer can email. Um, right, and, saying he's uh, working on the case with on yeah, behalf just, of them. Just, yeah, just conf confirm that, that they are working together on this. Yeah, exactly, that's good. Okay, do we need to vote on that? I don't know, do we? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's do it just in case. Can I hear a motion to, um, to put off any action on 56 Mendel Road until our first meeting in June, at which time we will review it? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Okay, all in favor? Uh, yes. 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 Arlene, are you there? I, I, I did say yes. I think oh, I okay. got okay. buried under someone else's yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Um, Grace has asked me for a guidance document regarding mask wearing at the town election, which is gonna be inside. It's, we're gonna have, have town meeting outside under the tent. Oh, that reminds me, I have, I have news. That's not good. Um, but first, the town, the t annual town meeting is going to be outside under the tent. But the but election, the election is going to be held inside. In the in the usual, in the usual place. And Grace would like some kind of guidance document so that she doesn't take the have to take the heat when she asks people to wear masks. So what what kind of requirements do you think we should have and are you saying that grace is encouraging us to encourage persons who are voting inside the building to wear masks yes okay is there uh, is mask wearing still mandated in town hall in general out for other it's on, on a it's day -day it's basis it's requested. It's requested. Okay. Right. Yeah, and so what have... makes this rise to an occasion different from day-to-day -to -day town hall business? I guess just the sheer volume of people coming in because hardly anybody's going into town hall now. You know, a few people who work there and right. a few people who come and go, but a lot of people are going to be coming in. So there's going to be volume, there's going to be closeness, there's going to be um, non-compliance. Yeah. It's kind of hard to come up with 
a guidance document when there are no mandates um, right. in places like, you know, like the elementary school and other places where there's a, a concentration of people, but, um, but we're not mandating masks any longer. So it is, I, I mean, I'm hard pressed to come up with a rationale for mandating it on the election day, but what does everyone else think? What additional activity, or I'm, I'm trying to think of the word here, what additional opportunities for voting are there? There are none. So, so there, there is not uh, vote by mail in this time? No, no. Or uh, pre-voting? No. Nope. Yeah. What, what about something, um, I mean, could we, I don't know, post signs or something that say that we, we encourage mask wearing in order to um, help protect those of us in the community who are immune, compromised, mm -hmm. you know, a whole the list vulnerable. of things like that. Yeah. 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 Because of the possibility of vulnerable um, especially vulnerable persons being present in town hall, we respectfully ask that everyone wear a mask for the yeah. duration of their presence in the building. And, you know, we could help post those signs when we were there, you know, Friday too. There should probably be a supply of masks there if that's going to be mm -hmm requested because various people will come to vote and they may not have brought a mask with them. Yeah, they probably won't these days. I think that, um, I think that Grace has a supply of, of surgical masks. Will we be satisfied with that? I mean, it's yeah. a short time. Most people will be in the room for five minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's better than no mask. Right. I suppose. Right. And I, th I, I, I disagree. I think that a lot of people are going to be wearing their masks or bringing their masks. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are still masking up. Yeah, I just I, I agree that a lot will. It's just that um, some may arrive without. And for those who do, uh, a supply should be there. Absolutely. I, I totally agree that most will. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess another question is, is Grace doing any sort of um, outreach on the internet or anything to encourage people to vote? Because if we do have a, you know, request, this request, I suppose, could go along with that message, Kat, so that people know in advance that we're encouraging the, the wearing of masks in order to protect those of us who are right uh, more um, immunocompromised in our community i don't know but if she is um if she is putting out any kind of publicity well uh, she should put that that with it um right um one thing we did talk about was the election workers and i suggested that she just make that a condition that the the workers are going to be wearing masks while they're working. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Because, because they're the people who are really taking the brunt. I mean, they're the frontline workers in this case. Right. So. All right. I will, um, I will talk with Grace about this and see, and see what she needs. And we'll come up with something. I, uh, a whole guidance document seems a little bit, a little yeah. bit extreme, actually. Exactly. I, I think this is a good compromise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just signage and and yep. advance advance notice, so that next time we send out a message, we can um, we can include it also in right. our message, right? Because cases yes. cases are going up. There's no question. Okay. Um, I just found out this afternoon, and I meant to go in and see what was going on, um, uh, that a big tree came down 
next to the fire station and um, squashed a, a school bus that was parked there oh, and poked a couple of holes in our trailer. <gasps> oh no. How do you <laughs> like that? <sighs> oh my yeah. gosh. Is our trailer insured? No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't, and I and I meant to go and see it. It didn't sound like it was really, really bad, but um, I meant mm. to go and look. So if anybody goes by that way tomorrow, pop in and have a look. Ouch. Yeah. Now no, yeah. Now no one's going to want it. I know. Well, we, we were all set to give it to the fire department. And they're not going to want it. Yeah, they might not want yeah, it anymore. They can have it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. So I, before this happened, I, um, you know, I included the fire department in the, in the message that I sent to you about the trailer and how I hoped we could get it empty on May 20th and so on. But um, uh, I didn't get an answer from them. So I sent, sent a specific message to them asking if we could get the trailer taken down on May 20th, but I still didn't get an answer. So I'll keep trying, but now we've got a whole new, a whole new issue here. Right. Right. But apparently the trailer isn't destroyed, but it's damaged. So okay. I will find out and let you know what I find out. On a um, related note, uh, I'll add that I did go to the shed. Oh, and, good. Because the, the trailer and the shed are related. Um, I went and yeah. checked our shed and um, Everything looks fine, except there are a lot of mouse droppings in there, and I did not come equipped with a broom or whatever to get it all cleaned out. So I haven't done that, but it um, it looks fine otherwise. Okay, okay. Did you you didn't? I sp don't suppose you looked at things closely enough to see if they were doing damage to any of our stuff, the mice. No, um, I, I did not see any sign of any damage. Our, our stuff is all nicely packed away in plastic bins. And um, then there's a cooler that is sort of fabric covered and that seemed to be in fine shape. And mm -hmm. then there are all the um, canopy frames that have those big gigantic sleeves that come down. Anyway, nothing looked damaged in any way. Cool. Okay. Um, I should bring some, I guess I should bring some mouse traps up there too. So um, if anyone does go soon to the school this week, they are working on the roof and there's a huh. ton of he gigantic heavy equipment and they are carting stuff that they're tearing off the roof now and they're putting it in, they have a million dumpsters and they're filling them. And anyway, it's not an easy uh, parking lot to navigate right now. Sounds like a good week to not go there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, good, good to know. Thanks for, thanks for that. me a little bit by surprise. Uh-huh. I'm glad to hear they're doing something about that roof. Um, Noreen, do you want to talk about this public health excellence, whatever it is? Yes, uh, public health excellence grant program. I think I uh, basically emailed everybody about it. We had an invitation mm -hmm. from the town of Greenfield uh, to join in a letter of intent to apply for this grant, which, um, and Garrett, feel free to chime in at any point. It's money coming from a committee that was formulated a few years ago through the state to provide more funding for uh, building up public health capabilities throughout the Commonwealth. And along with it, there are some going to be some requirements for uh, public health employees becoming uh, more, I guess, I hate to use the word certified, but more credentialed in terms of their field so that there's sort of uh, universal uh, background requirements for everyone. And at some point, 
those of us that are on boards of health will be required to take some minimum courses as well. But anyway, this money could be as much as $300,000 a year uh, for up to three years and could be renewable beyond that should the legislature decide that this money, money is useful uh, and it's really uh, doing what it was intended to do to build up uh, public health capabilities across the state. And the money can be used for such things as uh, health directors, health agents, inspectors, public health nurses, epidemiologists, and clerks to support their work. And so um, our letter of intent said that we would, um, we would uh, be interested in formulating a group with Greenfield, Montague, Deerfield, Leverett, Shootsbury, and Sunderland um, to look into how we might share services and form kind of a, an oversight agency so that everybody has input into the, the process that would take place. Now this grant application, it has to be done super fast. I think they're due, do you know, Garrett, it's like May 4th or something that they're due. It's pretty quickly. Um, the other thing that I think is important to say is that it won't have any impact on our, um, our authority as local boards of health. We will still have retain our individual authority unless we should so choose to vote ourselves to not retain that authority. Um, so we would basically be using these funds to provide this group of towns with additional resources, which might've been nice during the pandemic to have the advice of an epidemiologist or public, you know, more public health nursing input or, you know, have more uh, health agents, that type of thing. So we, we expressed our interest in applying for this grant with these additional towns. So I just want to make sure that everybody is um, in sync, understanding what we're doing in so far as we can at this point, and that we could get you know, a grant proposal written by Jen Hoffman, who's the director of public health in Greenfield, um, you know, essentially any time now, and we might have to review it very quickly and decide one way or the other if we uh, intend to move forward and sign on with these other se uh, seven towns, which we've pretty much told her in this letter of intent that, you know, we're interested in doing. I don't really see any downsides to it. Um, and Garrett, I know you know a little bit about it too. Yeah, I, I have no objection to it. I, I... The only thing that I wonder is, um, you know, so we're part of the regional health district and the public health excellence grant is separate from that. And so what, Correct. what does that look like? Yeah, I don't think we know yet what it looks like. And I think that would be part of ongoing discussions. And I'm not even sure in the grant application process, if Jen has to put together some sort of notion of what that might look like or whether we have time to formulate what it might look like during the first six months of the grant award. I don't really know. I can't really answer that at this point. So, I just know that Jen, as there, there's a municipal agency from what I read that is the lead agency that coordinates it. And I'm assuming that would be Greenfield. And is that who would administer the monies from the grant? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And make decisions about the distribution of the monies to the different communities. E yes, yeah. I would. Yes, I would assume so. But I would assume we would all have input into some sort of subcommittee that would help with those decisions or, um, you know, meet on, I don't know how often, let's say a monthly or every other month basis to help make those decisions, kind of like we do in MAFCO, Arlene. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any of that's decided yet. So there was a there was a an an, an email from Charlie Konecki wanting to make sure that we knew about this letter of intent. And he says, I am in the background helping the state on these issues. So Charlie is aware of it. I meant to let him know that we were 
participating in this, but I forgot. So he's aware of it, and um, I'm sure that if there were there were conflicts, he would have mentioned it. I, I think there was some sense that our county had not, um, this is from the Public Health Association, that our county really wasn't applying for uh, the grant money. Uh, yeah, the, the, as voraciously as some other areas, and that maybe uh -huh. um, it made sense for this little group that I'm talking about now, these six towns, to to come together and think about applying for it. Now, whether I don't know if FERCOG and the round uh, the public health roundtable that group on Western Franklin County are applying, I, I don't really know who else might be applying, but we were encouraged to apply. Well, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's great. I do and, too. And I think it's a good, it's a good group of towns to be affiliated with from, from my point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Better than the district because the dis the only two towns left in the district besides us aren't even near us. Right. Mm. So we don't have any kind of regional thing going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just remind people again that I might get, you know, Jen's putting this uh, grant application together now, so I could get it any time and I'll forward it out to you as soon as I get it and we may need okay. to make some quick decisions about it. Okay, okay. sounds good. So, so where we're not the host or fiscal agent applying for this grant, I think we should still take a vote of the board that we support being part of it. Um, just in case there's ever any question. Uh, I would agree with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion to that effect? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. So all in favor of a vote to um, uh, voluntarily join in this letter of intent and potential uh, grant? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good idea. And, and I ahead. have a one related update on that sort of related. I had promised that I would communicate with Phoebe Walker because at a meeting, two meetings ago, I think Noreen, you brought up that Phoebe had convened uh, public health nurses in, um, for in the FERCOD region. And among the topics was cross coverage um, yes. when people were away. And so I was in touch with her and she um, thought she had left me out. But in fact, I, I'm not quite sure what meeting she brought that, what meeting you were referring to Noreen, but she does, she did invite me to this public health nurse meeting at the trans the Oliver Transit Center in Greenfield last month. I just couldn't go. And she has um, put the, the subject of cross jurisdictional coverage, reciprocal coverage among public health nurses. She has put that on the agenda for the May meeting, which is May 17th. And um, she did mention to me, uh, she knew that we were part of this effort to submit a grant application for PHE. And she said, if it's awarded the PHE monies would be an excellent, um, that would be an excellent use for some of that money would be for um, coverage when someone is away and uh, their functions on the board need to be taken up by somebody else. So anyway, she uh, she then um, emphatically she um, told me all about the meeting coming up in May. <laughs> I have to say I'm I'm a little bit reluctant to start going to a, a monthly meeting in person up in Greenfield, but you know whatever um, I may or may not start attending that meeting. I never quite know whether I should go to these meetings for public health nurses because I have no such credentials. Speaking of credentials, um, I'm a nurse, but I'm not a public health nurse. 
but I don't know if most people there are. So I, I right, I don't think they are. A- anyway, just a little bit of history. I think this came about following our conversations. And you're expressing, you know, concern about needing a backup person. And then I think, um, oh God, why am I blocking on our Claudia? I think Claudia uh, could back you up. Yes, so she's going I to. had, that's why I had brought it up at a public health roundtable meeting, okay. uh, you know, as an issue. And I think it's really just Phoebe following up and make okay. sure, making sure she included you and that we were part of that whole discussion because I had okay. brought it up and requested it as a, you know, an item that people were concerned about right. or interested in talking about. So I yeah. think it's that simple, Arlene. Right. So when I go away uh, a week from today and return on May 11th, Claudia is going to cover for me. And um, then we'll talk, I'll talk with Phoebe about this summer. Um, so Okay. Yeah. okay. And I think the other thing is if you would keep reminding me or um, I could, maybe I should even send Jen a, um, maybe I should send Jen Hoffman an email that this, in, and kind of get the notion in her ear that this might be a good use of some of the money or some of the staffing for, okay. from this grant. So that maybe she sure. even puts that into the yeah so that she's even thinking about it right okay 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 i think some other towns in that group might need it too because um they've uh they're no longer part of the FERCOG public health nurse sharing either so we might not be the only ones that would be mm-hmm. thinking about that okay okay um when you mentioned that the ap- grant application was due early in may you reminded me that um we have the information about applying to opt out of the of any mandatory mosquito spraying and that application is due May 27th. Last year, I forgot about it until like 12 hours before it was due. Um, Don't let me do that this time. Um, This year they have, um, they have, they've been more specific about what the criteria are for opting out. So I'm hoping that it will be a little bit easier to do. when is that, um, Kat? And I'll I'll send you an email or something and remind you. When did you it's, say it's due? It's due May twenty seventh. Okay. Um, probably, probably we should put it on our agenda for next meeting. And, uh, okay. And and talk about the various measures that we would want to put in okay. place and how, and how to do them. Okay. So if we do that, that'll be a reminder for all of us. Right. I'll put this. Get it on the agenda for. Uh, when is that? May 4th. Okay. Yep, that's good. And also on our calendar, are we, yes. um, the May 20th, we are moving stuff theoretically from the trailer to the shed. Is that right? That's, that's the plan. And, and helping to set up for town meeting. Yeah, at right? least bringing, bringing the tents and helping with that. I don't and think we for need those, to do much For those of us that. who are able, I'm not, I don't mean to right. suggest that we all are doing that, but for those of us who can, okay. Right. We, we, and we'll just set up a time at a future meeting to, to meet to do that? Yeah, and I'll, yeah, I'll find it. When we, when we know sort of when the setup is happening, if it's gonna happen in the morning or the afternoon or whatever, uh, and also, I'll try to get um, get the fire department to bring the trailer down there so that we if can... If it still can be wheeled. <laughs> right. Yeah, really. Right. Well, I know it needs, I know it needs air in the tires. It was like a year ago, I went down there and the tires were low. So I pumped one of them up, you know, with the little compressor that I have in my car, but I couldn't reach the other one because they have that big pile, big piece of junk 
there on the on the what the east side mm. and uh, I couldn't I couldn't get my car close enough mm. to do it so the, both tires are probably really flat mm. so uh, they can pump them up get the highway However, department to to go over there yeah somebody can do that I'm sure and uh, and then they can bring it out if not I suppose we could go and get stuff and pile them into vehicles and carry them down there ourselves, but I'd rather have it like one-stop shopping. Um, now, now tell me what you think about the signs. Remember those signs? How get rid of them. Those signs? Get rid yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. Think back to the flu clinic. Did we actually use them? To any extent, I mean, I remember Ken putting them, putting them together, and he was the only one who understood them. They're a pain. They mm -hmm. really are. Um, I just wonder what we would do for signage should we ever have another EDS. Can Grace or the library use them? They're really troublesome, Garrett. I wouldn't. Fend, you know, I wouldn't you know. wish them on anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they're awful. They really are awful. I would think that we could get rid of them and we could offer them to other other people in town. And if they want them, fine. And if not, we can just trash them somehow. I'm not exactly sure how that could happen. Um, they might be recyclable at the trans Leverett transfer station. Hmm. I, don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Um, but we could buy something else if we needed signage in the future. Mm -hmm. it's, it seems unlikely that we will actually. Mm -hmm. The things as they are. Um, Yeah, and they're really, the thing about them is they're really indoor signs because the the mm -hmm. signs that go, and the, the, the structure is plastic, but the stuff that goes in there is basically cardboard. So they and can't they be would, They would out not the be reliable in an outdoor no um, way. setup. They would blow over in an instant. That's a good point. A, mo many kinds of signs, to be fair. Many, that signs are a problem with at outdoor um, right. EDSs, but. Right. Okay, These okay, well, answer. let's see how we can get rid of them. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to, um, to get in touch with Mark Foster because he was the one who offered to bring the trailer down there mm -hmm. and maybe he can, uh, maybe he can somehow make those signs go away. Mm -hmm. Well, I assume that they don't want them. And if they are going to the transfer station, I can just pull up next to the trailer and we'll throw them in the back of my truck. You have a sticker? With anything. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then that would be something that presumably we would have to pay for disposal. But if you could pay that, we could reimburse you yeah, out of our line funny. item. It shouldn't be very much, really. That's fine, because there might be other stuff in there that you decide to get rid of. Right. The other stuff seemed to me to be basically useful. I mean, the fire department might want the cots in the wheelchair. I'm not sure that that isn't a better home for them. Yeah. And, okay, so, so what about the, what about the privacy screens? I mean, that whole thing is really bulky. Should we save all that stuff? Maybe we, we retain them with a view toward the Public Health Excellence Grant or yeah, maybe. something along those lines. Okay, okay. I think that's a good idea. I'm um, loath to to throw them away, um, and I'll I'll bring the 
I'll bring the sheets part of it home and uh, and wash it. How many of the privacy screens were there? About a hundred. Uh, I don't know actually. Does oh. anybody know? It's like a hundred. Whoa. No, no. I'm no. Just kidding. <laughs> I exaggerate. There, there was enough for us to have a little privacy room, wasn't there? Yeah, the, a little um, sort of a, a so an entry that took a couple of turns so that it there was no line of sight from the vaccination I'm thinking, area into I'm thinking the... that there were like 10 or 12 of those units, right? With, with little feet and then yeah. a, a, a hanger mm. kind of set up with the-, with yeah. the um, yeah, it's probably about right. Are, yeah. so, so these aren't the like the three fold- no, no, these are I, these are homemade artisanal privacy screens. They, <laughs> consist, of, <laughs> they consist of PVC pipe, okay. two okay. long ones, and then a one with two elbows, right? And um, and they have some kind of a of of a foot thing at the bottom so that they are um, the, so that they're stable. And then my my neighbor over here, Edith Hunsberger, sewed up all these sheets that we thread onto the top piece there and I guess on the onto the bottom piece too so they're they're totally homemade it takes a village right yeah so, it really does and we do not have a patent on them Garrett <laughs> gee maybe we should and this was uh we surrounded the cots with these things so that if someone had a syncopal episode after an injection or if they were just there was an anxiety attack or something like that then um they could have a private space right i think we had two i think we set up both of those cots so that there were two places where people could lie down and then we also had a space where people could undress if they had to if they oh could, that's right yeah if exactly. they couldn't bear their arm right so yeah let's let's keep them they're just special. So the last thing that's left, as far as I know, is the complaint that we received regarding the athletic club. And okay. this complaint um, was first uh, proffered to Noreen, who I think was unable to take the call. And then there was a there was discussion with Arlene. And then there was, after that, there was a call to the Board of Health phone, which I did not get until well after Friday evening. So if somebody wants to explain what this is all about, I will. maybe Arlene, since you talked yes. to the person. Yes, when uh, this person could not, or left a message for Noreen, but had this sense of urgency. So they had my phone number because of some past uh, interactions, shall we say with a contact tracer. So anyway, um, they said this is an urgent matter and they wanted confidentiality. They wanted to remain anonymous. And um, their concern, and this was 3 p.m. on Friday this past, and their concern was that the um, venison chili dinner about to be served at the AC at six o'clock violated uh, the um, food protection program guidelines about what you can and cannot do with wild game. Um, and they sent me a PDF of the regulation, which you read it, it it's, you get kind of in the weeds a little bit, but um, it, I think the caller was right that if game is um, killed and is then uh, dressed in the field, anyway, this wild game sh is really intended for the consumption by the person who, who then owns the animal and um, for their immediate family and for their non-paying guests but that it can't be sold or given away. And so this person was calling out of a great deal of concern and kept saying, I just don't want anyone to get sick. So 
I didn't know what to do about this. So I called Charlie Kanicki, who was out in the woods somewhere doing some inspection of some sort. And he said, well, I, I thought can't... you were going to say shooting some wild game. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. He said, I can't check the regulation, but my recall of it is that as long as it is butchered by a USDA certified facility, then it's okay. But he said, call Claudia, she'll know. And I, it took a while to get a call back from Claudia and she essentially concurred, but both of them ended up saying, it's the board's call. <sighs> I hate that. <laughs> what do we, what do but, we pay but, them for? <laughs> right. With, with the, um, in the meantime, in between these calls, I called one of the co-hosts of the dinner, who is a neighbor of mine, Sean Meyer. And I explained the situation to him without naming the complainant. And he, but he immediately knew who the complainant was. <laughs> And he, and so this next part is hearsay, but according to Sean, there's been some sort of a falling out between the AC and this complainant. And according to Sean, the complainant is, has some ulterior motives and is doing what they can to bring the AC down or, or to sabotage that night anyway, to sabotage the success of that dinner was what, Sean thought. At any rate, Sean, uh, you wouldn't believe the number of phone calls that were going back and forth within the space of like no time at all. And Sean consulted with his co-host, Jake Stinson, and got back to me and said that the butcher of this venison um, is a USDA certified butcher who has worked for years at something Adam's Farm in Athol. And, um, but did not do the butchering there because a new regulation says you can't butcher deer in the same place that you butcher commercially raised meat. So he did it elsewhere, they didn't know where, but they said he is certified and he is meticulous. You won't find a more meticulous person. Um, Claudia ended up saying, well, I, he's a certified butcher. I'm sure he followed protocols, but it's the board's call. <laughs> So anyway, I communicated back to the complainant and I said, our agents don't see a problem. This uh, meat was butchered by, a, we have a report that butchered by a certified butcher were, were, you know, and I couldn't call any of you because to call anyone more than Noreen would mean that an open meeting law violation would have incurred. So mm -hmm. Noreen and I talked about it, but we just figured like, and, and I think as Noreen said, there've been plenty of venison dinners at places around, you know, it's, it's not unheard of to have a venison dinner, right? Anyway, yes. open to the public. So I go out for a bike ride, come back, and this person is continuing to leave messages and send me emails like, who are these agents that you have consulted and what are their phone numbers? And who is this, what is the name of this butcher? And where was the meat held in between when it was butchered and now? And I realized that I could have handled this so much better by just telling this person at three o'clock that their expectation that we could do anything to stop this dinner was completely unrealistic at that point. You know, and that that dinner was um, advertised, well advertised for like the better part of a week. And the, the complainant was waiting until three hours before the dinner to start calling the Board of Health. I ended, I ended up with Charlie pissed off at me <laughs> or maybe he was just pissed off at the complainant, but taking it out on me. But he was saying like, where's this guy coming from? What's his deal? And um, uh, does he not understand that we are not a, an emergency response program? And uh, we're not even full time. He said, so Charlie went off into this, you know, a, a much, a, a well, justified rant 
um, because it was taking up a bunch of his time mm -hmm. um, for something. And, and I do think the person's expectation about what could be done was unrealistic. We can't, as a board, take an action without a posted meeting, right? Right. So we could, what, we we could gonna... take an we could take an action if we felt that there was an urgent situation that needed right, but, our But as input. Charlie put it in one of his texts back to me, it was, there is no imminent threat to public health here. Right? And that's, the that's what didn't would have know that there was a diseased batch of meat, a tainted batch of meat. Now, the call that's... is just going on about some regulation. Right. Um, what? would the the health threat be from venison i mean what are we talking about you don't know it's me okay i can send you this regulation you know cmr or something or other that the complainant sent to me um the claudia in the end said you know if the ac is going to do this again she would just suggest that they submit in advance um, the credentials of the, the, the sort of chain of custody, if you will, of this meat and um, the safety with which it's been processed. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, you know, I passed that along to Sean as well, but okay. I didn't see any reason to stop the dinner from happening. I, I totally agree with you. And I have to right. tell you that that he, um, this person, um, didn't like the answer he got from you and left a message um, on the phone at um, town hall at 4.30 in the afternoon. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Wanting us to do something urgently. Yeah, that was when I was out on my bike ride and they were phoning me and leaving voicemails and sending emails and with you know this great deal of urgency and i don't know i don't know if you think i did not act completely but i don't i, I was looking for so what you know what what do i do Arlene, here? what what you did was above and beyond in my opinion uh, absolutely arlene and we appreciate your doing all that research and contacting all those people. Totally. Okay. So anyway, there, there it was. And um, maybe, I, I, what should we do from here? Should we talk with the AC of, about their dinners or should we just say, um, you know, if it's going to be, if it's gonna involve wild game at all, there's a couple extra things we need from you. Um, well, the, caller, that raises... the, com the complainant argued that uh, USDA certification did not um, relieve the burden of this regulation. You know, that the regulation still says that um, it's meant for the consumption of the owner, immediate family, and non-paying guests. Well, I wonder if the, because this is a members thing, if basically the, um, the, the bake sale rule applies here. That, mm -hmm. um, you know, people are, people are making a basically a voluntary contribution mm -hmm. for this and they are members of a private club. And I'm not sure that, um, that they're not exempt yeah. from that particular provision. It may be a good question to put to someone in the food protection program at DPH actually. And so I may um, throw together, if I can find a way to send a question to them by email, I might do that and see what I get back from them. That would be really great if you would turn yeah. it on. Okay. Because we may not have heard the last, um, I don't know, from this complainant. I don't know that anybody's looking to do another venison meal anytime soon, but in case we do, we probably want to have the answer. Yeah. Yeah. 
And to that end, I don't think it makes much sense to request any additional information necessarily from the, the AC until we've heard from the uh, food protection folks at the state, Arlene. Right. Okay. Unless someone else feels differently. I'll see what I, I don't think we in. need. I don't think we need more information from them now, but possibly in the future, those things yeah. should be. Mm -hmm. Possibly be, so, if that's yeah. what they advise of us. Right. Okay. okay. Um, I think that's all I've got. Let me see. We did that, 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 that. I just want to say thank you again, Arlene. It sounds like that was quite the ordeal and we appreciate your follow-up. Absolutely. Yeah. I second that. I know yeah. that that's, that can be really annoying. Well, I, if I had to do it again, I would, I think I would do it differently in some regards. Um, but I, but I had this, uh, maybe I suffer from a complex that is like, Oh, I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm responsible for this whole, town i have to make this right or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know but, uh, uh, i know that i know that complex myself do you know Arlene. that yeah. complex okay yeah, yeah. All right yeah. right uh, you you done good okay yes you did thank you all right and Is on, there on, any the, on the subject of thank yous i would like to thank cat for running running for re-election this year oh Yes. Some folks never learn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll second that. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. We'll see if I win. Um, <laughs> so, are we done? Have we I have nothing come? else. Noreen, you didn't have anything else from, uh, from Greenfield to tell us about uh, oh I, I just have one update and that is uh i forgot to mention that uh tracy uh rogers is leaving for a cog and no. yeah yes um she is going to be the um emergency preparedness uh coordinator for eversource oh how interesting and so she is leaving um very soon and uh, Carolyn and I, Carolyn Ness and I have reached out to her and we're going to be taking her out to, to dinner to thank her for all the support she's provided to us through the years. Oh, very nice. nice. Wow, they're leaving Kirkuk in droves, it seems. They, they, they are. Well, she, she did great work. She did do great work. Yeah, Absolutely. she was great. She's been there for so long. But I remember back when she worked for Stan. Remember that? Going way, way back. Oh, before really? She, no. Before she went, she was yeah. She was like a the assistant to Stan Rosenberg. Oh, they they're gonna miss her, and she has been uh -huh. excellent. Yeah, she really has. Interesting. She probably get paid better. Uh, she'll probably get paid three times as much. Yeah. No kidding. Well, I wish her luck. I wish her yes. well. Yes. I will express that to her when I see her. Yeah, do ex tell her that that uh, our board is will uh, miss her and uh, wishes her well and uh, appreciates all that she's done over the years. Uh, I will. I've already sent her a nice note inviting her to go out, but I will make sure she she hears that again because she deserves it. She totally does. Cool. Anybody else have anything they need to to say? So so the next the next meeting is march or may i think we said fourth and yeah and arlene you won't be here for that right you'll be away right. that's okay right. well have a wonderful time yes do All right go safe are you return so come back safe are you biking arlene yes yes so yes please be safe both of you okay all of you who are going thanks All right and um i will be in touch with you guys about what I find out we can do with the trailer.
And I think that's the only thing that's urgent from from me. Okay. Mm. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in yes. favor? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you, Kat. Good night. Thanks. Good night.